What's going on everybody and welcome to a new series on hacking around with neural networks, just kind of doing unconventional things with neural networks. And the type of model that we're going to start off with is the generative model. So what I have here is a simple program basically where I just ask the model, hey, draw me a number 0 through 9, I'll pick the number, I'll say please draw me a 5 for example. And that five becomes a sort of primer for the generative model. The generative model is then generates me something like a five. Now, the interesting thing about this model, though, is that first of all, this five is a totally unique, new, novel five. It's never, it's not in the data set. We've never seen it before. And uh, if I ask it to draw me yet another five, what it's going to do is draw me yet another unique, new, novel, we haven't seen it before, five. And um, so, so the reason why I think generative models are interesting is one, they're, they're still like a, a real like area of, of research and a lot of people in the, the fields of deep learning, um, kind of write off generative models. I'm drawing a four, by the way, just so you know, so four anyways, the, the people in the fields of machine learning tend to write off generative models because they don't quite fit our paradigms today of, of problems that we'd like to see solved. So classifiers, on the other hand, with deep learning, there's kind of two ways that classifiers with deep learning have improved. Um, and, and that's with incrementally better accuracy and results. And then also with, um, and there's our, our nice, beautiful four, you get the idea. Um, and then also with solving problems where there's like millions of samples that we just could not train with support vector machines. But arguably, I would say those results are kind of based more on uh, just using GPUs generally. So GP, GPUs. Um, and so those two things kind of happened at the same time. So anyways, um, so, so incrementally better results and then able to solve some classification problems that we've never had before. But with generative models, there, it just opens up an entire new door. And so just because we can't think of uh, use cases for them doesn't mean we need to write them off immediately. Um, I think probably part of the problem is a lot of times funding for research and stuff is done by uh, companies and stuff like that, that that have a use case in mind. And I think that's why we, we see these as being uh, useless. But anyways, um, no one's funding me uh, besides you guys. So Python programming and net slash support. <laughs> And uh, so anyways, we get to play around and, and do fun things. So uh, with that, let's get into the, the tutorial where we're going to, you know, get to this point, but also do some other playing around with other things um, and just kind of poke around. So what we've got, um, what I'm working with is Python 3.6, TensorFlow 1.7. And then we're also going to at least start off using uh, the following package. So hello here. So um the the commit for this exactly is 401 ebfd um it doesn't look like it's too actively maintained so maybe it won't be a problem but if anything's not working you can get the same python version same tensorflow and um, same same package that we're going to use here so go ahead and clone download that and oops i somehow got a copy of it and then what we're going to do is um, i'm going to break out of this one move that aside and uh, once you have uh, the package, we'll go ahead and extract it. And let's just go over what this is. So this is a character level generative model. And what it's going to do is you just you give it any characters. And then what it's going to do is you're going to say, okay, with all these characters, I want you to you train on it and then be able to generate me something similar to what, what you've seen. So it's, it's like a classifier in the sense that you can produce, um, you know, it's a, there's an input and there's an output, and the goal is to fit the output to the input based on the training data. So it's very similar to classifiers in that sense, but the difference is a generative model can take a variable number of input, and it can produce a variable um, sized output. Um, and uh, with, with TensorFlow, recurrent, we do have these dynamic recurrent layers, uh, which are slowly becoming capable of doing this sort of thing, um, but not quite the same. So um, I think the best way to, 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 to show you guys what generative models do is to just kind of use one and, and work with it. So so this is the package. Uh, we can check out train.py just to kind of see what, what's going on. 
Uh, but basically, you're going to pass in, you know, you're going to ask train.py. It's going to look in your data dir for something, but we can, we can use the uh, command line arguments to, to pass some other form of data. We're going to ask it to, you know, we're going to tell it where to save, where to put the uh, tensorboard logs, basically, the size of the network, all that stuff. But there's, there's defaults for all of this. Um, so you can kind of look through that. Once you start getting past uh, sequence length, maybe number of epochs, um, you, you probably are, are done changing things. I wouldn't suggest you mess with these until way down the line. Um, but the main things to look out for are the, the size of the model, um, maybe batch size. If you make your model too big that it can't fit in the memory, you could decrease batch size. If it's not too big, you could increase batch size to use more of your, you know, utilize more of your GPU possibly. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, sequence length. Um, so how long of sequences? So right now it's going to look at the last 50 characters. Each time it wants to generate one new character, it's going to look back 50 characters. So that's what it's going to do. Also, we can see that there's maybe some, some starting data. So let's check out data slash tiny Shakespeare. And basically we're looking for input.txt. So let's, let's go. Data, tiny Shakespeare, input.txt. And here's what we have. So as we can see, this is some Shakespeare. So it's a play basically. And, and there's a few things here that, that you want to kind of pick up. One is, is you see, there is some structure to it. Uh, you've got uh, basically what appears to be the structure of name, colon, new line, sentence, new line, new line, name, colon, new line, sentence, new line, new line, and so on. Um, so we have that. Also, we can see that, uh, you know, basically you've got name, which should just be like one or two words, most likely. Uh, then the sentences could be highly variable. Uh, and then it's like old English, basically, but it's clearly English. Okay. Um, so yeah, so that's our training set. The other thing that I, I really think is cool about generative models is the size of data that's required. This is only one megabyte of data. That's it. Um, so, so the fact that um, if it works, spoiler alert, it works. Um, if you haven't seen enough spoilers already, um, that's really cool that you can do this with such a small amount of data. So anyways, so that's our, our starting data set. Let's go ahead and train the model. So coming back into this main dir where we've got train.py, let's go ahead and actually just run python train.py. So it's just going to use all the defaults. Um, we're going to change them. Don't worry. But slowly entering into the world of generative models. Um, so let's make sure this actually starts training. And once it does, I'll just pause it. Um, and then I'll uh, unpause it. Okay, so there it goes. If yours is not training this fast, um, you're probably on a CPU or maybe a lesser GPU. Um, but I'm pretty sure that uh, this doesn't even come close to fully utilizing my GPU. Like I'm recording on it and my desktop is totally fine. I can see my mouse moving pretty pretty smoothly. Anyways, um, what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pause the recording while this is running. Uh, and then I'll pick back up when we've done, I don't think I'm going to finish all the epochs, but I'd like to get us, do, do at least a few. So anyways, I'm going to pause it while this is going and I'll pick back up um, in a few minutes. But I'm not going to stand here in total silence with you all. Okay, I actually uh, found that it trained pretty quickly, so not a problem. Now, um, one thing that we can do is we can always check to see how training is going and, and kind of make a determination whether we need to continue training or not. So uh, you can always run, uh, oops, I'm off screen. <laughs> uh, it's just tensor board dash dash log, I think it's log underscore dir. I can never remember. No, it's one word. Log dir equals, and then we'll just say logs because that's where the logs are. Um, then what we can do is we can navigate to this URL here. Yours will be a little different. It's probably not HPC. And here is our training. So actually, you know, to me, it looks like you probably could even kept going um, and probably made a little bit more progress, but that's okay. Um, so, so looks like it trained. Let's see what it learned. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, we'll quit out of here. And now we want to run sample.py. So with sample.py, uh, we actually can just run um, straight sample.py, but it also has command line arguments that we could pass. So you would say, where's the save directory? Um, you can prime it. Uh, in this case, it's priming it with a space. Uh, and then 
um, we can act and then the, here we have the, the actual sample here, but we're probably not going to touch that. Um, but but the big one too is, is n. So this is how many characters do we want to sample. So it'll just continue going, and th in this case it's going to generate 500 um, samples. So let's go ahead and pull back up to where we were, and let's go ahead in Python sample.py. And we'll just go with the defaults because it's it's already set up to work with this data set, but later on we'll change some things. So, um, so here's here's the the return that we got, um, and, and you'll see that it's got you know the the B here and the new lines aren't actually making new lines. So one thing that we could do this is encoded for uh, UTF-8. So one thing we could do is just not encode for for UTF-8. Um, or we could just decode. So for example, we could say like later on down the road, I think probably the best way to do this is going to be actually something more like uh, data data equals model. And you can you know do whatever you want to do with that data. But then if you wanted, you could just print data.decode uh, from UTF-8. But keep in mind that you know in this case, we don't want it to be UTF-8 because it's really just ASCII characters and new lines. There's really no uh, fancy characters. But if you're using fancy characters, like if you're you've got like, um, you know, Chinese or something like that with the the, the characters, you're probably going to want to keep you know UTF-8. Anyways, uh, let's run it one more time just with sample.py, um, and then hopefully we'll get to see the actual structure a little better than what we're seeing here. Right. So as you can see, wow, we even got Romeo. That's the first time I've seen. <laughs> That's actually kind of interesting. I've never seen it uh, maintain. It usually makes up new names. Queen's also there. Um, I don't think I've ever seen it put out Romeo though. That's cool. Anyway, Pam, uh, let's do n uh, equals. Uh, let's do a thousand. Let's just do a little bit more than what we have. Anyway, so what we can see is um, it, it's clearly learned the whole you know name, colon, new line, all that stuff, and then and repeat. Uh, one thing I find interesting though is it's capitalizing the names. Um, let's go back into the data set real quick. Interesting. So at the beginning of this data set, uh, the the names are not necessarily capitalized, probably because they're not names. Like it's like first it, it's like not a known entity, I guess. But then once we learn, once we have a name, it is all caps. I guess that's just part of the structure. Interesting. Yeah, but if you actually know the person's name, uh, it'll be in all caps. So that, I guess that's why that was in all caps. I was, I was wondering why was it doing that. Um, yeah. But, you know, so, so not only did it learn the structure, it also learned, I mean, some of these things aren't quite right, but you draw the Lord Bount Cursed. These are words. Bount isn't really, but, you know, <laughs> my throngs at home. Uh, Bive is not a word. Um, you know, obviously there's like some words not here. Also, it's not really totally coherent. Uh, but at a quick glance, you would say, hey, yeah, that's definitely uh, what we trained on. So now um, the next thing I'd, I, I'm curious about when when I first saw this was could we if it can learn this structure right this is pretty basic structure in English um, could we get it to learn to code like could we get it to learn to do this on Python so that's what we're gonna do in the next tutorial is we're going to see if we can get a generative model to actually learn Python uh, instead of plays so uh, stay tuned to the next video. Uh, if you like this content, you like what I'm doing on the channel, you go to pythonprogramming.net slash support, support what we're doing here. Otherwise, I'll see you in another tutorial.